Uh, you remember the script, right? I don't know how to do an intro. <laughs> Alright, what's up guys? So RK sent me their RK G68 and RK100 keyboards for me to review, and I also really wanted to do a modding video, so if you want to skip to the modding section, it will be at the timestamp right here. Okay, let's get into the G68 itself, which is going to be the main focus of today's video because it is a 65% form factor, and I don't exactly have the switches or the patience for a full-sized RK100. Starting with the keycaps, they're double shot PBT, but they're kind of thin. I actually really like the Dolch colorway on my model, it's not too flashy, but it's pretty nice and simple for a so-called gaming keyboard. They have their alternate functions printed on their front sides, which is helpful for navigation. On the bottom of the board, there's a wireless dongle tucked into a little pocket for traveling convenience, so that's pretty nice. Oddly enough, while the RK100 does have single stage adjustable feet, the GK68 omits them entirely. However, on the back of both boards, we have USB Type-C connectivity and two USB 2.0 pass-throughs. Also in the box are some spare Gator on Reds, which I guess are meant for WASD if you game. There's a pretty basic USB-C to USB-A cable, which will do the job just fine for charging and wired connectivity, but don't expect a designer custom cable. It costs more than the board itself. A wired keycap puller in case you want to switch out the default keycaps is also included. Now the 65% form factor is my personal favorite for gaming and productivity, and it mostly comes to the dedicated arrow keys. The build quality here is pretty great, even though it's almost all plastic except for the aluminum plate, and the case itself is plenty rigid. The G68 comes in at 660 grams, which is about one and a half pounds. As you can see here on my Amazon basic scale that I ordered specifically for this video. Unfortunately, there's some pretty harsh RGB shine coming through the stock keycaps, particularly the red ones. And speaking of red, the stock reds in my model are all right. I mean, they're literally what you'd expect. Okay, let's mod. All right, now with the keycaps and almost all the switches off, we can start to see what is inside of the RKG68. It features a hot swap five pin PCB with RGB and, oh, oh, oh. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do actually is remove the plate, which by the way is made of aluminum, and we're gonna put in some neoprene, which I used in the previous modding video of my tofu build. Now the most important step when you're maintaining any electronics is to disconnect the battery. And in this case, we're also disconnecting the daughter board from the PCB. Once that's done, we're just gonna set the PCB and plate aside, and I am going to cut out a bunch of neoprene from this big sheet and I am going to painstakingly fit it inside of the case in small fragments because the standoffs prevent me from putting in the big sheet. So yeah, I did that and then I went to do an O-ring mod. And this is an O-ringing the switches, which people yelled at me about so much. I swear they didn't watch the video, the O-ring video, because I'm not putting them in the switches. I'm putting them under the screws. Anyway, what we're gonna be doing here is basically burger mounting, which is where you put the PCB in between two O-rings. So the first step is threading the screws through O-rings so that you already have the first O-ring, which is gonna be above the PCB, on the screw already. Then I use tweezers to place O-rings on the standoffs so that when the PCB goes over the standoffs, it is also over the O-rings, and then you screw that in with the O-ring screws. So it's not actually that complicated and it adds a little bit of flex. While I'm screwing the plate and PCB back in, let me quickly advertise my Discord, which has about 73 members at the time of me doing this voiceover. And um, yeah, please join, it, it would be great. We talk about keyboard stuff and tech stuff. Okay, as you can see, the plate and the PCB now have a little more vertical leeway, which creates a more consistent feel. At least it's supposed to, I don't really know if it does. I kind of just like doing mods because it's fun. Anyway, whether it works or not, I'm not sure, but now let's move on to the stabilizers. I broke that one. I don't suggest using the metal tipped uh, tweezers because when you do plate mounted stabilizers like this, 
you can break them. Okay, so first we're gonna disassemble the spacebar stabilizer. These actually come factory lubed on the RKG68, but I'm mostly gonna be ignoring this. I did wipe it off of the wires, so now let's do the holy mod. I don't think anyone really likes doing the holy mod. I don't know, that's just me, but um, yeah, it's basically putting a thin strip of band-aid into these stems so that you have a little less tolerance and then you're left off with a little less rattle and a little more stability overall. You don't want to use band-aids that are too thin. After that, I went and I lubed the stabilizers, including the wire, the stem, and the housings with Crytox 205G0, reassembled them, and got ready to put them back into the board all fresh and lubed up with the good old white stuff. Are you sure about that? Now we are off to do the Band-Aid mod. Now this is not the holy mod, it's just another mod that involves Band-Aids. This is the wrong way to do it, actually, because what I did was I extended the Band-Aid all the way down onto the PCB and it results in this crappy, mushy sound and feel. All right, the next sound test is going to be with a properly done band-aid mod where the band-aids do not continue to the PCB. I'm going to be using Boba U4Ts that I bought myself and also this keycap set, the Plum Blossom keycap set in OEM profile, which is made of PBT, that I got sent from Banggood. I actually really like this keycap set, except it's made for a 60% board and this is a 65% board. So I did have problems with that, but that's my fault and we will be checking that out later. But in the meantime, let's check out the sound test. All right, the stabilizers are sounding a ton better in my opinion, and now we can get on our switches. I'm going to do this tube style, and this is completely unscripted. Okay, these are Boba U4Ts, like I think I mentioned, and I got them off of AliExpress for about $47 for a 70 switch pack. I have no idea if these are real or not, but they do say Gazoo on them, so I'm guessing they're not clones. And yeah, so before we put on our keycaps, let us go test out the switches. All right, all of our switches are on, and before we get on the keycaps, let's test out every switch. So I'm using a website called keyboardtester.com. That's literally about as straightforward as it gets, I think. And I recommend using it if you do a custom or semi-custom build like this. Okay, let's get on our keycap set. Again, this is the Plum Blossom OEM Profile keycap set that Banggood sent me, and there will be an affiliate link in the description if you want to buy it, and I will get a kickback. So this is a 60% keycap set. And I didn't really realize that while filming, but I liked it so much that I went and I grabbed the original keycaps from the keyboard and I am going to be using those for some of the keys. Just try to look over it. Otherwise, the design on this is really cool. I like how it kind of continues the, the artwork, especially on the modifier keys. And yeah, it's overall a great looking keyboard in my opinion. I'm pretty happy with the end result. It sounds good, feels good most importantly. And let's go check out a final sound test. So I really wasn't disappointed with how this mod turned out, and I think at $70, the RKG68 is a good base for a semi-custom build like this one. While the keycaps and switches alone did cost more than the keyboard itself, I think it's definitely worth it for the improved typing experience. And of course, most of the fun in the custom keyboard hobby is in the modding. Yeah guys, so that's been the mod and review of the RKG68 and RK100. I hope you enjoyed, and that was also my first experience with Tactiles, the Boba U4Ts. I was not disappointed. Anyways, affiliate links below, please click on them. I, I, it gives me money, I think. Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.